Good afternoon, everyone. We'll be starting in a couple of minutes, but before we go and continue with our webinar for today, we at Paperspace just wanted to thank the 372 attendees from last week's BIM for Interior Design Session 1, Introduction to BIM and Practices. We do hope you learned a lot from that one, as I'm sure you'll learn a lot from this one today. This time around, we'll be tackling BIM for schematic and conceptual stage. Still, of course, with our speaker and instructor for our modules, Sir Ray. While other attendees are coming in, we'd like to welcome everyone to the online edition of Paperspace Philippines Knowledge Series this 2020. For those who don't know what Paperspace is just yet, we'll get to show what we do shortly. So before the webinar ends, we'll be having a quick question and answer segment, but you guys can send in your questions via chat or via our dedicated Q&A button anytime throughout the webinar, and we'll have your questions answered live by Sir Ray. Any of the questions we fail to answer during the live webinar will be sending in via email, so all of your questions will be answered. Like last time, I'll be giving you a quick rundown of what we'll be tackling for today. So first, we'll go through conceptual planning and schematic design. Second, we'll be tackling studies and analyses. And lastly, we'll talk about workflows and best practices for BIM. So for last week, we got to introduce to you what BIM is. This time, we'll be tackling more technical topics to add to your skill set. If you missed last week's webinar, you can check that one out on Paperspace Asia's YouTube channel and Facebook page. After today, there's going to be a quick overview of next week's BIM webinar, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so let's get starting. I hope everybody here is settled and comfortable to introduce to you guys what Paperspace is and what we offer. I'm handing it off to Paperspace Philippines Technical Director, our very own architect, Joel Gulimlin. Thanks, Noah, for the introduction, and welcome, everyone. I'm here to give you a quick look at who we are at Paperspace and what we do, and to give an overview of the whole BIM for interior design sessions and future courses. Paperspace is a collective of specialized interior architectural consulting practitioners with registered offices in four countries, including Singapore, Thailand, and India. You can think of us as a group of professionals coming together with one goal, to form a community by sharing our passion in design, as well as to learn, grow, and support each other in order to continuously deliver amazing projects. We are blessed to do what we love with the people we trust. Building from years of friendship, we share the same vision of harnessing our strengths and pursue design entrepreneurship. What's amazing with this team is we all believe in sharing our expertise and knowledge in our fields that we are open to collaboration and mentorship. With well-curated teams to take the lead for projects, Paperspace has collective members with expertise to successfully deliver the, pro the following types of projects. For interior design, we do workplaces, resort and hotel, retail and commercial, condominium and landed residential projects as well. For architecture design, low to mid-rise building, mixed-use structures, residential projects, and even addition and alteration works for a and Other services include engineering consultancy, landscape design, and urban planning. This is our stat sheet to show our regional presence and snapshots of doing what we do. It makes us all proud to see our hard work coming to fruition with successful completion and delivery of over 10 square footage 10 million square footage of interior design projects since 2016. We believe that every project deserves the best attention and our experience is one of our foremost advantage to our clients. We apply our delivery approach to ensure that we capture our clients' vision, strategize and translate them into well-executed designs into reality. 
The next slides are some of our successfully delivered projects. One of the tech giants dominating the world, Google. This is the first project we had, we had after officially being registered as a business here in the Philippines. This is a landmark project enforcing Google's commitment to Philippines rising economy with an area of 14,900 square meters. This is equivalent to 10 floors then located at Vista Hub in BGC. This project is a proof that our regional collaboration was successful and have since then been awarded the biggest Asian campus in Manila, as well as in Bangkok to continue working with the same clients. Immediately after completing Vista Hub, we're lucky to have been awarded the biggest Google vendors office in Asia, which is located at ALS Virtus North in Quezon City, occupying 14 floors of office space. Indeed, Philippines is the biggest BPO supporting Google. Another people space collaboration between Singapore, Bangkok, and Manila, we have been awarded to be one of three regional designers for Facebook. Located at the penthouse floor of Menorca Tower in BGC, it boasts of a double volume height that we took advantage of and added mezzanine floor to create drama and subordination of volume and spaces. This is the only Facebook office that has its own hidden theme karaoke bar as a way of localizing it, aside from our selection of materials and furniture. Antar is one of the biggest global market research company in the world and has been one of our long-term clients since Singapore. Creating a strong relationship built on trust and having delivered four prior projects before this latest project with a size of 2,500 square meters located in West Podium Martica CBD. We continue to work with them on several projects and was even included as part of our latest workplace adaptation research. This local architectural project is one of the few projects that we are blessed to be working on during this time. Though we are in its early stages, this opens up the local market opportunity for paper space as well as for exterior architecture. As part of paper space culture, we are always open to collaborative work and have always provided platforms for continuous learning. We are very excited to have you here to join one of our knowledge series, which we hope that you will enjoy learning. You are now in session two of Beam for Interior Design. You have to remember that this is just in a series of introduction to give you a better overview of what it is all about. We also hope that whatever level you are in in the IED practice, whether you are a student, a professional, or even an enthusiast of the project, you are able to give an insight for, your, for you to decide if being is one of the tools that you'd like to learn, use, and master. Before we start our session, uh, our second session of the three-part series, we would like to formally announce that we will continue to share our expertise on being through Mr. Ray Cruz as our expert. These are paid courses to help you learn the Revit tool in detail and make sure that you will have a good foundation and gain confidence in the use of the software. We have prepared three modules separated between beginners, intermediate, and advanced beam course modules to ensure we will be able to acquire a new skill to use in our design practice. Thank you once again for joining us and hope you have fun learning. Please visit our FB page at Paperspace Philippines and our website for more information about us in our knowledge series at paperspace.asia or PM us, and we will be happy to assist you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sir Joel, for giving us an in-depth insight on paper space. We've captured quite an audience for the modules and which, and which will surely help you with your BIM skills. And now to formally introduce to you our speaker for the webinar series. Our speaker for the webinar series has 14 years of experience in the AEC industry and worked with various consultants and firms. 
He has operated side by side with contractors and BIM teams for project collaboration, developed systematic workflows, integration of standards and work scope, and other BIM requirements. He provided trainings and skill under development under ATC or Autodesk Training Com uh, Center companies to upskill contractors and subcontractors in utilizing Revit applications and other digital platforms. He is a bachelor degree holder in architecture, a certified Autodesk Revit architecture and MEP professional, and an ATC certified instructor, profound in point cloud to BIM systems. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our speaker for BIM for interior design, Mr. Raimundo P. Cruz from Beam IT. Good afternoon again. My name is Raimundo Cruz, and I will be your facilitator for today's session number two, which is BIM for the schematic and conceptual design stage. For this session, our agenda is to focus more on the initial phase of the project and how building information modeling can play a crucial role to towards the direction of your project delivery. For today's session, we'll discuss more on the initial stage of any interior design project, which is conceptual planning, and discuss how BIM can aid you during this phase and what other considerations and features that might help you get this process. We shall also tackle tools which are used in Revit that can support you in your design studies and analysis. Thus, maximizing platforms potential and help you as well in making better plans. And lastly, I'll discuss some insights on how you can streamline your project workflows when it comes to integrating with BIM processes in this stage and as well as other best practices. For most designers, this is usually what they call a deal breaker. Well, for me, I will call this, I will call it that way because in this space, you might already determine whether you have a chance to win or lose a project. That's why planning smart is always a must. Although a lot of designers still practice traditional ways, especially in the interior design field, you can always integrate your current processes or process with BIM. Some will probably start by sketching while having their inspirations captured in that perfect moment. Or on, this, or on the other hand, you already have your, if you're already proficient with AutoCAD or other CAD softwares, you can still work using with BIM system as well. So don't let your worries of letting innovations get in the way of your creative, creativity. Just because you're already you are already comfortable of what you're doing, but it should be a stepping stone for you to have that edge. Nowadays, competition is very steep. If you really want to land a good job or a good project, you should not limit yourself from ideas and technology. The difference between a good design and a great design is having good study and analysis when it comes to a project. After you have gotten all your needed information and work scope to work with, especially during client consultation, of course you need something to back up your design intent. One of the features is using BIM platforms such as Revit and Articat. It's daylight analysis and which is essential for getting that best orientation of your plans to decide whether which side is cooler or warmer during different periods of the day. Enough lighting for all spaces, saving you energy, and also you can play along with daylight with some of your design elements. As for space, it is important to define the requirement of the occupants. Well, technically, if I'm the client, I will surely demand for my space requirement. That why, that's why designers should have a good space programming in order for you to provide the right amount of type and type of space for your equipment and furniture needed to function efficiently. If some project team may overlook or even misinterpret the space requirements, it may result in costly change of orders and cost overruns during the construction process. Now, 
next. Daylight is very essential in planning. It can accentuate areas and give better visuals and provide warm ambience for spaces. In order to have a good daylight study, you also need, of course, to specify the correct project location. Because in reality, daylight sometimes varies based on specified location. And also, you need to visualize shadows from different types of views as well. In the first place, how will you determine daylight if there's no shadows? In beam applications like Revit, features like Solar Study will enable you to do this. Other than that, you can even do simulations as well for a specific date or time that you want to project. In my next presentation, I will show you just a short video clip on how to create your own solar study using Revit platform. Okay. In my model, uh, you, you can see here from my previous session, actually, I'm just using it from last time. Okay. So in the first place, how will you know it if there's daylight? Of course, you need to have some shadow. So you can determine whether you have enough lighting for certain spaces or whether you need to add more windows or openings to get that uh, enough lighting for your areas. Then probably we can set a proper location of the project. So here you can specify default cities or the all locations based on the uh, current settings here. Or if you have the exact project address, you can also type it here. As long as you have an internet connection, you can type any location based on your current project address. Okay. Then probably I can just also make minor adjustment just in case you want to have a uh, another location for that. Okay, then, okay. As now, as you can see, the shadow and the lighting direction also changes. Now, let's try to have a short simulation here. Okay. So first, probably I'll turn on my sun path. So at least I can see the direction of my uh, sun, sunlight. And then probably set a uh, default or probably a certain period in which I want to project my uh, solar study for a specific time and date. So here, I uh, will also set from sunrise to sunset to do my simulation. Okay. Probably just three to four days and then just apply. So as you can see here, it already changes from the sunrise Okay, and currently it has the longer shadows. So in order for me to simulate, I'll just uh, set it up on my current preview. Yeah. Now you can see here, as a, a sun from my sun or solar path moves, the shadow also changes. So you can see here the direction of the shadows for your layout. Okay, now let's try to check if we can uh, further study the area by fixing a specific time of the day. So for example, if you want to check your living room at let's say a specific time, let's say around 9 or 10 a.m. I can simply change it here for my parameter and then focus on my space. Whether do, do I still need to have or need to add some additional windows here for the specific day and then other design elements which can enhance daylighting. You can see clearly which areas would probably need some lighting or even analyze which is usually hotter or cooler or cooler side of your layout, depending which region the project is situated. With this feature, probably it will help you a lot 
and have a better planning layout and exploit more on how you can manipulate better lighting on your designs. Space planning or space programming will probably be the most important consideration when it comes to interior design. And it's considered as an essential thing. It can bring you a sense of balance between beauty and comfort and your design. Without proper planning, you can result, it can result in wasted of space, awkward areas for occupants, problem in circulation and accessibility in other concerns that may result in many revisions. If you are using a BIM platform, there are certain features and tools that can aid you get enough information and help you based on your space planning requirements, which also saves a lot of time during this stage. For my next clip, I'll show you a short demonstration on how some of the features I'm using can also help you get through this space for your project and hopefully give you a better overview and the potential of these tools. Here, let's say I, I, I somehow already finished my initial plan and then probably you want to check if I met some of my space requirements, okay? So as you know, you are working with a BIM platform. So information here are embedded on your model. So just by selecting the room, I can easily determine certain information like space, area, perimeter, and volume. Now, let's say if you need to display those information, I can simply change or display the type of annotations that I'm currently using in order to display those data. So just like the area, I can just simply change my annotation type. Okay. It is also essential, let's say, if you want to compute for the how many finishes that it will take to apply for your floors, you can also check on this. And then also for volume, if you want to compute for your heating and cooling requirement, cooling load requirements. Now, I can also put some room legend here to identify my rooms for this specific particular plan. So I'll just add here with my room legend here. So it automatically identifies each space that is already applied in my current layout. So I don't need to retype. What it's already, what's already done there in my current model will be displayed in my legend. Okay. Now, if you want to change or apply color for your current layout, you can also do that by just changing or applying visibility. By the way, the colors here are auto-generated. So if you want to change that or modify, you can also edit those uh, color fields. It can be uh, edited here in the dialog box. With this, you know you're not gonna miss any spaces because what you have modeled or created, it will just auto-generate that. You can also change the legends based on your area here, based on the size for each area of the room, and also by department, or you can also add additional fields as well. Okay. So here I will just use by department. So each space is actually um, assigned to a specific department and then you can isolate or group them accordingly because uh, each space or each room has embedded information there. So you can assign each department for each space as you can see here. So it's highlighted based on my department legend.
just by selecting the room, you can also modif uh, modify to which department it should belong. It has its parameters and properties to modify that. Now, let's try to create a room schedule. Okay. So uh, remember, we're using all the information that is currently in on our BIM platform, which is Revit. So it will just take probably just a few minutes by choosing the right fields that you want to, be, to apply on your schedule. So like the name, area, probably the level, which is the room is located or situated. And then here, so it's, this is similar to your current Excel or schedule. So this will define the arrangement of your columns on your schedule. You can also add additional parameters as well. Okay. And then you can sort them accordingly based on the field that you select. Let's say here, I'll just probably use by name. And then I want to calculate my total spaces used for my rooms. And then, okay, so there you have it. You already have your room scheduled. As easy as that. It will show the department, area, level, room name, and all the fields that, that I have included for this schedule. Now, let's say if you want to create a separate schedule for a particular set of rooms or spaces, I can just simply duplicate them and create additional schedule. But this time, I can change the name for, let's say here, for administration, and probably add a filter. So I can only display what specific type of space I want to show on my schedule. Here, all that contains administration. And then, okay. So it's much easier for you to, uh, to create this just by using a BIM platform. So imagine if you could do this just by using AutoCAD, which usually takes a lot of time. Okay, now let's try to put uh, here our schedule. Place it on our title block. Make some minor adjustment to make it fit. And then just probably drag it. Okay. Now, for my display, I can change my legend other than by department, I'll use here by name, by room name. Okay. And then just probably make minor adjustment. So there, it's, it's quite easy actually. So you just make your schedule, put it in title block just by drag and drop, and then modify it even on your paper space. It is quite easy, especially if you have large projects when identifying each space and getting information from them. Or you can also embed parameters that will help you sort better and get your data. This is one useful advantage of BIM if you would compare it with a traditional method, which is very tedious. Auto generation of schedules based on your layout is helpful. Not only you can quantify spaces, but on your actual models as well. So if you will think about it, how much time it will save you just to calculate for the total number of elements, you just put it into your project or get the total sum of areas you have used. Next.
When you have a picky or a critical client, you may need a lot of alternative designs to showcase in order to provide them different options to choose from. Sometimes our first design may not be their first choice. It's better to be prepared. Another useful feature that I would say is pretty much handy when it comes to this instance set is using a design option that is particularly in Revit and some other platforms as well. It allows you to generate several designs alternative to have a better chance of landing that project. You can say that it's like creating a backup design just in case the client may not be impressed by your first proposal, which can be shown in, which can also be useful when using this option. You can show instantly on the same model. I'll show you guys on my short demonstration to give you a better insight on this BIM design feature. Okay, so let's say we already have done your conceptual interior and let's say you have your thinking, what are the ideas or layout that I can arrange it? So I'm planning to change a particular area or particular space. So here I will just make an alternative, alternative design on a particular space which is the study area. So in my design options dialog box, I can simply specify how many options that I would like to include here. Okay, so probably just three. There for my study area. Okay, so probably I have here uh, three options. Here, and then if you're thinking to add another one, you can add additional one as well. And then close. So I'll focus here on the study area. Okay, so let's say if you're not as satisfied with your current layout, so probably I'll thinking of rearranging the furnitures for this space. So uh, for my three options, I'll focus on the furniture arrangement. Okay, so for my three design options, I already have my first one. So I'll just put my current layout, that current options. And then for my second design option, I'll use the same set of furniture and then rearrange it. So let's say my study table, I'll locate it on a different location, my cabinet on a different part. Let's say if you're not happy with your circulation or probably just to give another uh, uh, option. Put it here. So as you can see, I'm just dragging all my furniture since I'm just using here a concept and as just an example. Okay. I may put my partition on this side here and arrange it here. Other than that, from the furnitures that you have, you can also change the 
actual furniture itself. So if you have a different set, you can also use that as an alternative. Because currently for my example, I'm just using uh, the same type as my uh, demonstration, an example. Okay. Put my TV on this side, just drag, place it here. So you're just playing around with your current layout. So it doesn't have to be uh, too precise at this moment or this stage, but you can also do measurements if you really need to have uh, exact or want to specify exact dimensions. Okay, so once you're already done your current layout, so I have here a uh, different option. Okay. And then for my last one here, I'll just technically do the same thing as my third option. Okay, just a disclaimer, I'm not a interior designer, but just to show you on how you can do this when you're using Revit. Okay. So put my furniture on this side, arrange it here, Let's drag. Actually, this doesn't look on my, my other options, but anyhow. <laughs> Here, so as to, have, to make it look semi-private, probably add or move my sofa on this side. Okay, so let's say I already done my third option. If it take a while. Oops, I forgot my lighting here. So I'll just technically move it on the center, this. And then I already have my first option. Let's move it here again. Or this is my option two. My first option, just to check. So, so it's actually trying to display the current uh, layout that you put for that particular uh, view. And there. If you're well proficient in using the beam platform, it will just probably take you just an hour. And now here, I'll just add some camera view to, to show a better perspective. Okay, let's drag and if you're not happy with your current view, you can always modify your camera to a particular area, or you can create multiple ones. So at least you can have different views for that same space. So enlarge my field of view so you can see better the space. Okay, so let's focus more on the perspective view here. So at least you can see clearly now what I already done. And then if you need to display that, you can go for the visibility, dialog box, and just change the current uh, display for which des uh, design option that you want to showcase. So here, let's say I'll show the second option or the main one, nine two. Okay, you can see here my arrangement. Well, I don't say it's very good for my point of view because I'm not good in arranging furnitures, <laughs> but probably could do better. Here is another, my third option, just in case you want to make 
uh, changes on your current display, you can also modify some of the families here. So currently, I am I'm my view is currently blocked my, by my partitions there. Okay. Okay. So there. So you have your three options. So you can showcase this. Uh, showcase these three alternative designs anytime that you want. So even during presentation, you just have your 3D model. Just by clicking, you can specify your design layout. So you can go for how many that you want. So you can go from two to three, depending on how much ideas that you have. So here, if you want, you can also rename the design options. So at least you can easily identify what is option one, option two, and option three. So let's say this is an open space, this is in private, or this is a totally enclosed area. Okay, so you can also do this on the other spaces or the entire layout. So you cannot just focus on one space, but the entire design itself you can modify as a design option. Okay, so current now I'm just uh, renaming it. So you can easily identify for that alternative option. There, so am I first, second, I'll just rename it. Okay. And then, okay. By the way, this design option Anytime is editable. So you don't have to worry just in case uh, suddenly you've seen any problems or issues on your current layout. You can modify it anytime. And once probably you've already decided which options to use, you can set, set it as your primary design one. So let's say your client already ch chose option one, and then it will just be option one on your model. So you wouldn't have to worry about the other elements that you have added. This BIM design option feature can also be applied to the actual plan. If you have several alternative layouts, it can also be used to showcase different facade styles, groups, or even finishes. For me, this is actually the best way to maximize your creative ideas, especially when you are inspired and passionate when it comes to designing. It will also save you a lot of time and effort rather than starting from scratch again, because you already have or you already incorporated many possible ideas into your model, thus giving your client more choices. Okay. Next slide. Okay, next slide, please. Knowing mat what materials you intend to use holds significance right from the start of the concept stage to the selection and visual presentation, the presentation up to the final and practical application. It can also dictate the cost of your design, sustainability, and ambience that you want to project in your spaces. 
Using BIM applications, you have a wide selection of materials to choose from, or you can even edit, create, and incorporate from other sources as well. So right from the start, you can have a better decision when it comes to choosing your finishes. Before you even start in any kind of project, even in any industry, you always need to have a system or a so-called workflow, which will guide you on the process that you will need to follow or consider in order to have a systematic and efficient way to manage your tasks. I have a simple workflow here in which you can have actually, where you can actually modify or adapt in your current process to better foresee your direction as you go along in this phase of the project. So this is just a sample diagram. You can modify it or you can have your own or even integrate your existing process. So from the space planning to analysis, in case you have alternative designs, you have an option whether to use the feature that I have discussed before, or if not, you can go directly to material consideration and then go to presentation. So from presentation, you have a choice whether you know, we need to use another platform or use Revit at the same time. And then from there, you can conduct your presentation. Okay, so you can integrate other processes or system on your current workflow, okay? Remember, you are working in a BIM environment with information as well as materials. And also you have the advantage of interoperability, okay? of the end of the platform that can help integrate into different applications, whether for analysis or better presentation. And since technology is constantly evolving, softwares like Unreal Engine, Enscape, Fusor, and V-Ray can have that integration they need to export, import, and update. This enhancement Enhancements, when utilized properly, you can save a lot of time and effort to work on your projects. By the way, there's also augmented reality and virtual reality. You can use it if you really want to stand out when it comes to presentation, which has now been popular in other countries in the field. You have to understand that you are using building information modeling. And this system is not only about the software, but also the system itself where you develop ways to systematically manage, process, collaborate, and integrate different workflows. And even though countries like Singapore, UK, US, and others already have highly developed BIM standards, doesn't mean we need to stop, we shouldn't stop from, the, from there. People need to keep on learning in order to be ahead. Maybe that's why the reason you are currently here in this webinar is to get more information and knowledge when it comes to BIM. I'll probably show you one of my preview, or uh, I'll probably show you uh, some uh, visualization uh, that, that is currently using, that is integrated to Unreal Engine to VR, okay? This is actually a sample video. You can actually search it on, on YouTube. There's a lot of samples there public samples out there that you can check. This is currently uh, using an Unreal or a Unity engine that can help you better visualize and much better immersion on your current model. Well, for this, you can actually change the materials as you can see, and also the components as well, or even the furniture. If you like, you can also uh, make your client uh, use the VR for them to check for themselves which one is the best one that's suited uh, on their uh, choices. It's actually using a game engine. That's why uh, it's, very it's very similar. So it has now been integrated. From gaming, they started to move to interior and architecture industry. So you can see here how realistically it is because it has been rendered at the same time 
you're inside your actual 3D space. For this sample, uh, for the hardware, it's currently using HTC Vive as their VR hardware. Okay, there's also uh, uh, Oculus out there. Similar to design option, you can change many things here. You can even turn on the light or off. If I'm the client, I can even look around, make interaction, and move objects. These usually have an integration with other applications like 3D Max, Rhino, and added other modeling software. So, okay, you can see here I can even move furniture. From your beam model, you can build more high detail 3D components from these other platforms to make it very realistic and process it in this real-time rendering engine. And actually uh, it, uh, open doors, windows, or interact with other uh, components. I suggest probably you can check out some of the sites there that features this kind of technology and innovations to, to give you a better idea as well. Okay? From my demonstration that I've shown you, these are some of the features that are being used today or being integrated when you're using BIM. Especially when you go abroad or other countries, some companies offer these kind of services. If you broaden your, pers your perspective, Oh, and what other technologies and innovations out there, you will always be ahead of the game. So never stop learning something new. Uh, thank you guys. And I hope in this session, you have learned a lot of insights and get a better view of the many possibilities when you start working on your projects with BIM. And now probably since we still have a lot of time, I can entertain some questions. All right, thank you very much, Sir Ray, for today's webinar on BIM for Schematic and Conceptual Stage. Uh, you showed us really neat, uh, neat tips and tricks with the videos you've shown. Okay, so for the question and answer portion of our webinar, uh, we actually have a lot of questions coming in just like last time. But uh, before I give some questions to you, Sir Ray, I'll be answering a few questions regarding the modules and uh, the replay of our webinar. So uh, next slide, please. All right, so we have a question here uh, asking that uh, he wants to refresh his Revit knowledge. Uh, he is based uh, in Qatar and is asking for uh, the time for the training that he uh, will be attending online. So right now, we'd like to ask you guys, we'll be uh, making a poll right after if uh, <clears throat> you'd rather have it in the morning or in the afternoon. But so far, these are the dates, uh, September 12, 19, and 26 for the basic. Interme uh, for the intermediate, it's October 10, 17, and 24. And for the advanced level rev training, that's November 7, 14, and 21. For local enrollees, that's uh, per person, that's 2,000 pesos. And for international enrollees, that's 99 USD or US dollars. So... That's that. We'll be sending in a poll later, so make sure to answer that so that we know what time uh, would you rather have the training? Would it be in the morning or in the afternoon? Uh, 
And uh, one more question before I give it to you, Sir Ray. Uh, um, one attendee here is asking, can we get a copy of the recorded presentation so that we could watch it again, since it's quite problematic for those who have slow internet. So like, love, like the last webinar, we actually posted it on uh, Paper Space Asia's YouTube page. So that's posted right there. We've also shared that on Paper Space uh, Philippines Facebook page. So check that out. We'll be sending in the link here via the webinar chat so that you can check that out. And uh, like today's, uh, for today's webinar, we'll also be posting that on the YouTube channel as well. So right up is the technical questions uh, we have here for you, Sir Ray. Uh, hi, how long will it take to master the program? Is it easy to modify furniture in the library? Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Well, actually, it's, it depends on how much detail you want to model or edit from the existing one. Because at the end, there are certain types of level of detail when it comes to 3D modeling using DIM. So you have the basic one like LOD 200, 300, 400, up to 500. So there are certain stages for different level of detail. So if you go for the basic one, probably it just take you just a few uh, few minutes just to model that because it just needs a basic shape. So, but if you go for the uh, basic one like LOD 300, which requires usually for design development, it will depend on the quality of details that you put that. But at the end of the day, I always keep saying to my students is that it, it's how much eagerness you're willing to learn because some students easily learn the same uh, syllabus for a shorter amount of time compared to other students but technically anything you put your mind on whatever you need to learn or what requires you you can easily learn that okay and then probably if I'm your instructor I would always guide you on whatever things that is necessary or if you have other queries other techniques and other tips that you need to to learn more in order for you to have a better modeling skills and so on so just don't uh, close your mind that it's too technical or something like that you can always learn the things that you always or, or learn the things that you need not always what it's always out there okay okay so we have another question here does Revit also compute the needed lighting requirement for a space Actually, it has a few lighting analyses, but for me, technically, it's you have to have an actual model. The model should be uh, modeled correctly, okay, in order to, to produce that. But in some instances, if you really want to have a much more accurate, accurate uh, analysis for the lighting, for the luminance, because all the lighting that you put on your model actually has those data, this luminance for all lighting components. You can actually do that in Revit, but for me, if I would have a better or much more accurate, I can import the same file to another platform. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, uh, here's another. Uh, what rendering softwares can we use that is compatible with Revit? Well, uh, it depends. If you want a real-time rendering, just like I've shown you last time, we have Enscape. We have Fusor, so it has an interoperability with Beam, so you can move around. Uh, and any changes that, that has been done in Revit can be integrated or automatically uh, updated on the other platform. So vice versa, whatever materials you put in Revit will automatically reflect on those platforms. But if you would like to have just visualization on just a rendered view, there's also a V-Ray plugin. Okay? So, I think there's also other available uh, plugins there that you can also check on. Okay, usually uh, Autodesk provides some um, uh, other available or suggested platform. But for me, uh, those are the things that I've used before. Okay. 
All right, we're down to our last question, but any of the uh, questions that we left unanswered will be sending in via email. So here's the last one. Hi, is this app or program come with a fee to use or uh, how much is it? And uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, well, actually it has a 30 day trial when you use Revit. So you can download directly from their website. And then there's also a student version, but there's also limitation on the tools that they're using if it is a student version, okay? And then for the 30-day trial, so after that, you need to have to renew or probably uh, if you still need to learn a lot, you can have another username to, to extend that 30-day period. So just a different account, okay? All right. Thank you very much, Sir Ray. I'll be handing it back to you to check out the overview for next week's and our last webinar session. All right, Sir Ray? Okay. Uh, for our uh, next session, which is uh, session number three, which is our last one, so um, this will be the discussion will revolve around the design development stage and technical process, production, documentation, detailing, and lastly, how BIM is used during the construction phase. So this is much more on a technical phase during the production phase. So la, the first one is just an overview. The second session is more in the conceptual plan. And on this last session for next week, we'll be focusing more on the design development, detailing, and construction phase. Thank you guys. And I hope you will still attend on my final session next Monday. All right. Thank you very much, Sir Ray, and to the rest of the attendees today. Again, we made this webinar as a series of introductions to the world of BIM. Make sure to catch our third and last session. We still have slots available, but make sure to get them while you still can, as these are limited. So with regards to the Revit training poll, I've already have it live. So you can go and answer if you would rather have it in the morning uh, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. That's Philippine Standard Time for those who are, are overseas. And after, or would you rather have it on the afternoon at 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Philippine Standard Time? Okay, so for those who want to know more of BIM, you can check out again the modules here that Surrey uh, will be teaching. We have our courses for beginners and also those who are in the intermediate and advanced levels. This is also to ensure that you can use BIM as a new skill to your design practice. If you're interested, let us know by sending an inquiry at NOA at paperwork.asia or send us an SMS or call us at these numbers 0993-813-8905 or 0915-534-9456. Again, thank you very much guys for attending our second session, BIM for Schematic and Conceptual Stage. We'll see you next week for our last and third session. Thank you, guys.